Man, I tell you what. Uh, I'm like a stunned. <laughs> <laughs> um, Still. That's what I want to ask you. When we did the podcast TV show last Sunday, we talked about right. how it was 596 days right. since the first presidential candidate said he was going to run, and that was Ted Cruz. And because I have a British husband, yes, um, quite so. Campaigns around the world aren't necessarily this as long as ours, and some people wonder why do you do it this way, where you have a, almost a campaign almost for two years for president of the United States? Because I know you're tired, I'm tired, everybody worked really hard, the nation's tired of it. But do you think it's about the right amount of time? Well, I think that you could probably execute a campaign in a much shorter period of time because in about six weeks or eight weeks. So most of the, when we look at the exit polls, most of the people decide long, 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 long before. So you yeah, could, they get locked in. You could, you could call an election for six weeks from now and 80% of the vote is already spoken for without candidates, right? Okay. A Republican versus a Democrat. And then the question is for that other 20 or 25% of the vote, where do they fall? Could they figure it out in six weeks? Probably. But who cares? Because you know what? Free speech is a thing. And what the Supreme Court has ruled and what we have ruled in our hearts is that we should not, uh, we should not ever consider the idea of limiting people's opportunities to speak out. Somebody w has probably already decided that he's going to run for president. Somebody has probably already declared. Probably that uh, same person. <laughs> right. Exa exactly. Uh, and In 2020. The, and there's nothing wrong with it, right? Let no. Him, let him go. Let him go. Well, and it, you are auditioning or... Uh, Want, you want the biggest job in the world, the leader of the free world. You want to be the CEO of the United States of America. But there is something to be said for, and I, I do believe this is true. As we move forward, celebrity name recognition, basically the way it works in politics is, uh, used to work in politics, you get a record and then you get famous. And the way that you get famous, you know, you're famous in your own state or you're famous where you have been governing or working, and then you it costs a lot of money. You have to raise a lot of money to become famous in the whole country. Uh, and you have to become famous in the way that celebrities are famous. Barack Obama is a very good example. A guy who had a high profile, but outside of Illinois, probably known that much, not known that much. By the time he is... But when he gave the convention speech um, for the Democrats in, in 2004. 2004, everyone was like, wow, who's this? I remember I got to meet him. Um, in February 2005, mm -hmm. we went to the gridiron dinner separately, um, but we were sat at the same table across from each other with USA Today. And it was my first time going to that dinner. I was like, wow, I get to sit across from the junior senator from Illinois. He'd been in town about 10 days. When I got home that night, my husband said, so how was it? And I said, Peter, I got, I got to tell you, I met Barack Obama, the senator from Illinois, and I think he could be president in like 20 years. Ah, womp, womp. <laughs> Four years later, he was but he the president. But when you were talking to him and you knew him and your husband knew who he was and he was a freshman senator, he probably had, he had a national... He had that threshold. He he no, no, not even close. He probably had a national name identification of 20%. Maybe, right. Nobody knew him. Right. So there were three people when we started running. And by the way, this is the final installment of us. It is. It is. And we've it, enjoyed it we've being en with you. We've enjoyed it immensely. But as we look back over... As we look back over the course of this election, there were three people that started with essentially 100% name identification, which yeah. is where everybody ends up. No matter who you are, when you end up, when you finish running for president, you have 100% name identification. But the three people were Jeb Bush, Hillary Clinton, and Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And the question about the future and the question going forward is, is there going to be time in our media culture, in what we're doing, is there going to be time for people to get to 100% or does the future belong to people who are already famous? That's interesting. I wanted to ask you about, obviously, the end result. We've had a dispute on the podcast and on the show because <laughs> you've made fun of me for a while. Last May, I said that I could see a scenario because Donald Trump was so popular that he could win the popular vote but lose to Hillary Clinton in the Electoral College. But I, I mocked you. You mocked me. Yes. And so now, it ended up that the reverse was true. Right. Hillary Clinton won the popular vote, hitting her target in, that was about the national polls. Right. But she loses in the Electoral College. So four times in American history now uh, have Republicans won the presidency through the Electoral College, but not won the popular vote. Democrats are reminded of this, and then they do stuff like march down 6th Avenue in New York. And uh, Philly and Los and, Angeles, Chicago. And, and they're angry. Uh, they're like, what's this Electoral what College you speak electoral of? Electoral College, <laughs> this is so bad. Um, and 
for for Republicans, it just works better because they live, they're the country mice, and the Republicans are this, or the Democrats are the city mice. Republicans live out, and the Democrats live in. The closer you are to a center of population, more likely you are to be a Democrat. That works well in the electoral college because of states like yours and states like mine. Yeah. So growing up in Wyoming, uh, I remember my grandfather um, would say, uh, you know, they're, there they go, carting off all of our energy resources to the coast so that they can benefit. But he would always say, he said, but we have a voice. Mm -hmm. um, and the voice is that we have two senators. You know, the, the yeah. representation from Wyoming, I think, has always been superb. Was was Wyoming the most Republican state this cycle? Yes, at 70 percent. The second was West by God, Virginia, at 69 percent. And the third, <laughs> for our producer of the five and Sean Hannity, Porterberry, Oklahoma, was 69, 68 percent. Good, good uh, at being Republican, but not maybe the best. Yeah. Well,